Now, one of the qualities I noticed, you know, as I kind of showed you right here, when I rubbed it with my finger, it went purple. So um, that's actually like a bonus color because purple's not really in my palette, but I can make it by rubbing. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> Never seen a paint morph into something else just by rubbing it. And I mean, that's just a really cool thing. So I can come into some of these areas uh, and do that. Now, again, I've got this white oil paper. I, I want to um, not have a lot of just plain paper, right? So I'm gonna do something right now to uh, get a little bit of a different mood here. It's getting soft and amorphous, that's fine. So I can always come back and restate just using my finger because I like the feeling of the paint. I feel like uh, there's a lot of control just with the movement of your finger. Um, like I'm really liking this one right here. That's very cool. A, it almost feels like a landscape. Um, so again, just coming in here and looking for where I've got white paper, filling in those little holes uh, and Having fun. Tell me if you have fun when you do this. I'd love to know. Let me know in the comment section what colors you're using, whether you're using pigment sticks or some other medium, because it's not, you know, you can do this type of thing with any medium. I just happen to be doing an experiment here. So now I'm going to come in here and again cover up some of that white paper, setting up a bit of a pattern. So at this point, I really am, uh, I don't always do this, but I, I'm trying to eliminate my white paper. Um, not sure if you can see that. Let's come in here, take this stick and add more. Really luscious. Um, And then I'm going to do something fun down on this one where I've got this warmer color, maybe do it down here as well. Add a little bit more of this warm color. Just kind of following my intuition here. Okay, so I wanted to come into this one and again, use just my hand and see what I can do. I guess it's like finger painting, huh? Let's add a little bit of white just to give me more to work with here. It's quite thick in some places, so I'll need to give this quite a bit of time to set up, you know, but that's fine. Because while this is setting up, I'll be starting many other ones, right? So you can be generating a lot of these things and generating lots of gifts for people. Just be thinking of playing, thinking about what you love in terms of shape and color. Keep your palette simple. Keep your um, sizes kind of small and have lots of work going at the same time. So this, it doesn't have a whole lot going on in the top part. Here's some white paint. I'm just going to draw with my finger again. Add some calligraphic marks. And add some white down here. It's going to blend with the gold and the green. And there's some thick paint here. Can add some white, just a little. So 
set up a motion here, a rhythm. I don't know if you can see that, but it's gone quite light. And a little bit of light into this. That's going to make these imposter marks look a little bit more present because right now they're there's no real contrast between them in terms of value. So I'm adding lighter light below. Increase in contrast and value. It's going to make those show up a little bit more, but I can also go dark. This is quite purple. The nice thing about art is oil paper is that <laughs> there's not a feeling like, you know, it's an expensive canvas or um, an expensive panel. You can just play and not worry about your materials being too expensive or too precious. And that can make a really big difference as to how you move your tools. So I'm going to go back into dry media. Um, let me just maybe zoom in on a few of these at a time uh, so it's a little bit easier to see because I know it can be hard to actually see what's happening here. Um, if I scoot in to see, I'll do maybe two at a time here and move my paintings there. So now you can kind of see these two and how they're evolving. And I've got my dry mark making pencils here. Same ones I started with, really. This one is a... Uh, my, one of my favorites, 8046 Stabilo, very nice dark. So because I am a mark maker, you know, um, it's always a good time for marks. I just uh, feel like marks uh, are like one of the most personal things you can do. And everybody's marks are different. They're so personal and unique. And one thing I'll do sometimes is just like, I've got a lot of like amorphous curvilinear things going on here. So I don't have any, you know, real geometric lines and we'll just add a little bit of that here. I've added a geometric line just for change and contrast. Um, it's really anything goes here. I'm not thinking. I'm responding to, you know, I have these loops here and I'm kind of thinking, well, I don't have a similar thing going on with pencil let's see here then i can move this over here and there come down here this, this is a very high key one what can i do here what is this um this is my ink tense okay to put some of this down originally and goes right into that wet juicy paint really nice way um, so you see my marks are actually becoming part of strata and strata again are like what i'm doing here are these bands right it's um some line is thin, some line is thick, some line is dark, and some line is light. Some line is um, quiet and curvy, and then it gets real rectilinear and more aggressive. Just playing with uh, the response of this tool in the wet, juicy paint. Okay, I'll move this over, come to that one. Let's see, what could this one use? I'll change my tool and just move on to this one is a, I mean, I just have a whole assortment like all of you guys do, Stetler Mars Lumograph Black. Um, I'm actually really liking this one, so I don't know. I, I, I may kind of just slow it down a little bit and put, you know, minimal line in here. Uh, just responding to what I see. 
like, where do I need a little accent? Maybe here. Kind of turned into a dashed line. And this guy, I saw these underlying marks, so maybe I'll just continue that. Restate, right? I don't have to go over this exact mark. Why would I do that? I don't need to do that. Okay, so here they all are so far. I might need to let these set up a bit. I can, uh, I'm, again, I'm, I'm just working wet into wet and seeing how far I can go. I don't really have much paint left on my palette, <laughs> which is good. Um, because I don't want to have to save a lot of paint. If I had some paint left over, I might just throw it onto a, a slot board, as you know I like to do. So now what I'm doing is I'm just using marks. I'm uh, putting in a few darks that I didn't you know, have before. And come down here. Now think about it. If you did something like this, and then when you peel the tape off, do you think that somebody would like to receive one of these paintings from you as a gift? It didn't take you a lot of time, didn't take you a lot of materials, but it did take your creativity, your personality to do this. And who wouldn't love to receive that? That's an amazing gift. Your creativity is an amazing gift. Not everybody uses their creativity. We all have it, but not everybody uses it. So. It's really cool when you know you show up in your studio and you use your creativity. So there I made some marks and I didn't really want to keep those. So I'm just gonna obliterate like that. Come in through here. Um, some more drawing. If your marks get too crazy, you just can obliterate them or some of them. About. And then what else can you do? Well, got some other tools here, like these silicone tools. It's a very fine tipped tool. You can see it's just a silicone flat chisel tip. And what happens if I kind of come back into here and do some drawing? Let's see what happens if I, yeah, that's cool. Although I don't want these to get too busy and too like manipulated, I just want to um, kind of enjoy the process. And so I might even do something that, you know, maybe I'll challenge myself and say, okay, well, this is what I did today and um, let me do this. So now I've backed up the camera and of course the, the best part of all this is when you take the tape off, right? Everybody loves that part. When I go to workshops, everybody loves it when they get to take their tape off. So maybe that's what I'll do because this is really an exercise. Um, I was having fun and I want a feeling of spontaneity. I don't want a feeling of overworking these paintings. I'm going to peel this tape off very carefully and notice I'm peeling kind of parallel. Can you see how I'm, maybe I need to camera close. I just want to show you there's kind of a trick when you take um, tape off and it's good to have like a clean paper towel just to hold down um, the border here of your tape where your tape is. So I'm, I'm, I've got a clean paper towel. Okay, I want to show you that I go very slowly when I peel this tape off so you don't tear the paper. Now I'm peeling it almost parallel to the surface. I'm not upright like this. I'm not peeling the tape off vertically, right? Can you see that? I'm going all the way down. So it's almost parallel with the surface. Now I did burnish the edges, so hopefully my edges will be relatively clean. There could be some paint that oozes under, but that's okay. Once that dries, it'll be fine. Plus a lot of times you'll mat these pieces and you're not going to worry about a little bit of paint slipping underneath. So get the whole picture of what I'm doing. So I'm going to hold this down with a clean paper towel and keep pulling this tape off parallel to the surface and slowly. Don't be in a big hurry to rip your tape off or you might rip the paper. I had a lot of students say, oh no, my paper ripped. 
So go slowly and come back and take your time. Now, if you ever find your tape is like just not letting go, you can actually heat it with a, um, a hair dryer and the tape will definitely let go of your paper. That's a little trick that works really well. I've done that before. Like if you tape a painting or piece of paper and let's say, you know, you don't use it right away and then the tape just gets more and more stuck, that can happen. Okay, now I gotta look for where the next piece comes off. And usually you're, you can really see where those edges are. So I'm gonna take this off like that. Use the blade and then just get it started. Now this is a rather large piece of tape. That other one was kind of cut in half and smaller, but this one's a bigger piece, the one inch. Now I have to be kind of careful because you know, this paint is really wet. <laughs> And see how wet it is and now this was very thick paint so I'm not surprised that some of it oozed underneath the tape and that's okay if you really wanted to correct that you could but I'm not going to worry about that now you just look for the piece of tape that's like sitting on the top well I hope you had fun I did did you do this with me if you did please comment you know below and uh, I'll link to these wonderful luscious I think you'll like them if you try them Again, these are uh, by pauldamaris.com, these wonderful, thick, juicy oil sticks. And I'll just hold this up. I took the tape off and you can kind of see up close, but I'll show you each one um, on its own. But this is how far I got in just, you know, not that much time, but I, I certainly did enjoy myself. So there, there it is, all six paintings. There is a feeling of strata in these i think let me know down below if you tried this with me i'd love to know uh, if you painted with me and what you thought of your results and what are you going to do with your paintings however many you made are you thinking of gift giving or selling them in a gallery or framing them or tucking them away for another day maybe you'll finish them later maybe they're already done but thank you for joining me art is so fun and you are able to express your creativity it's a wonderful gift to be able to do that. So thanks everyone. Bye now.